Hey guys, welcome to the Voice of Diabetes. This is Diana Butucci. Today I am going to talk about something that is so common, however, so underdiagnosed and undertreated here in the United States of America, and yet so many women suffer with this every single day. If you guessed polycystic ovary syndrome, also known as PCOS, you guessed right, because today I am going to talk about PCOS what PCOS is and how we treat it and what women can do to try to make symptoms of PCOS better. Today I want to talk about this hormonal disease that affects over 5 million childbearing women here in the United States of America alone. And unfortunately, PCOS is so underdiagnosed, so I suspect that the number is actually much higher. Many people do not diagnose this, do not know how to diagnose this, unfortunately, and a lot of the times it is diagnosed by GYN and also endocrinologists. Hopefully, I can bring more awareness to this, and hopefully I can teach you how we can better manage this disease that affects so many women on so many levels. Women experience the symptoms of PCOS very differently from one to the other. And I believe this is why it makes it so hard for uh, people to identify with that they have PCOS or for doctors to identify that their patients are suffering from PCOS. And a lot of women unfortunately suffer in silence and this is why I decided to create this video to bring more awareness and hopefully identify people that may say, hey, maybe I have PCOS and I want to talk to my doctor, my provider about this to see if I have this so that you can intervene and get the proper treatment. PCOS involves every aspect of a woman's body. It affects all metabolic functions as well as all aspects of the menstrual cycle and fertility. Some of the common symptoms of PCOS will include either irregular menstrual cycle, so irregular period, no period, or very heavy menses. People can also complain of pelvic pain, extra hair growth, also called known as hirsutism. Usually they'll grow hair around the chin line, acne, weight gain, or trouble with losing weight even despite putting in the effort to lose weight uh, and also patches of dark thin skin is also another symptom. Women with PCOS may have up to 25 or more cysts on one single ovary and that is why we call it polycystic ovary syndrome. Some of the reasons why women develop PCOS, uh, according to research, is one, is genetic. So if you have, you know, if your mom has PCOS or a family member, you are more likely to have PCOS as well. Insulin resistance and, of course, excessive uh, androgen levels, which are known as male hormones, are likely the risk factors. The androgen levels is actually what leads to the hirsutism, the excess hair growth that I just mentioned. The thing about PCOS, it affects all women across the board. It doesn't really matter about ethnicity or race. This kind of affects women across the board equally. That obesity also places women at higher risk for PCOS. Um, so again, that inability to lose weight or being overly obese can actually lead to PCOS. There are treatment options, guys, that I treat with that actually do help patients with PCOS. And these are the treatments across the board that endocrinologists and also GYM providers are treating once they identify the patient has PCOS. You know, these medications are not really approved for PCOS, so it's not like the FDA has a label stating that, you know, this is a PCOS medication. We These are used for sometimes diabetes, sometimes they're used for completely different things, but of course we treat patients with these medications because we, we know that this, this will help reduce insulin resistance, it will help reduce androgen levels, and sometimes can help with weight loss as well, which is something that's very important with trying to reduce um, you know, the PCOS-like symptoms and trying to increase fertility, making women more fertile. And fortunately, a lot of the times these medications do work. And once we treat the patient, they are able to become pregnant. And that is a, a very great feeling to be able to do that. Some of the treatment options for PCOS, one is birth control. And this is good because it can help with the um, uh, menstrual cycles and menstrual abnormalities, as I mentioned earlier. 
oral contraceptives that that contain estrogen they're good because they help improve acne and of course we know we all care about how we look and acne can sometimes make us feel very insecure it can cause depression so of course once we're able to treat the patient's acne overall their mood improves and they are much more confident uh, which you know of course we want every patient and everyone in the world to be confident and happy and be happy with the way they look and acne makes us sometimes harder so that is important to treat and then we use metformin i use metformin a lot in general we use metformin for pre-diabetes diabetes but also for pcos because we know that it improves insulin sensitivity and of course it helps with metabolic abnormalities which can improve fertility as well i am going to talk about that a little bit in depth in just a minute but then of course the, um, you know I don't use letrozole but GYNs we use letrozole because it can induce ovulation with with women who are trying to con conceive so a lot of the times women will come to me and they are already taking letrozole but I will add on other medications like metformin and of course with the combination a lot of times you know luckily we we are successful and the patient is able to conceive so that's always a good thing so the role of metformin with pcos is it helps the body to control blood sugars by helping the body respond better to the insulin that the body is making again this is known as insulin resistance so the metformin helps decrease the insulin resistance and making the insulin more sensitive in in other words the insulin is being utilized better in the body uh, metformin also helps reduce the amount of glucose that's being produced by the liver because we know that the liver produces glucose therefore metformin kind of says hey stop I don't need any more glucose in the bloodstream I already have enough in return we see lower blood glucose levels and insulin is being utilized better and therefore keeping sugar levels in a normal range I do have a video all about metformin which I will link at the end of the video if you want to know a little bit more in depth of how metformin works but really those are the key factors it helps reduce insulin resistance which is great it also helps control the amount of sugar being produced by the liver in other words it helps reduce some of the glucose that's coming out of the liver because we know it's not necessary so this is good and you're probably wondering well what's the link between metformin and weight loss the link is that when we reduce insulin resistance you're not overproducing more insulin trying to compensate for what's happening because you're using the insulin that's already being made much better so the body is able to detect that as a result when we have less insulin on board we lose weight so a lot of patients on metformin it's not that the metformin is causing the weight loss is because of the way that metformin is working and we're helping reduce some of the insulin resistance in turn the patient is able to lose some weight and of course we re always recommend exercise and eating as healthy as possible with all patients but especially with PCOS because we can help reduce insulin resistance and therefore also helps patients reduce some of the symptoms of PCOS. For PCOS patient is so important as I mentioned diet and exercise are crucial but also trying to reduce stress sleeping having a good sleeping pattern and getting adequate amount of sleep um, is also very important so trying to really live a good and balanced life is really going to help alleviate some of the PCOS symptoms if I have patients on metformin who are using it for PCOS symptoms I will have them take a multivitamin or a b12 because we know that metformin can actually affect the absorption of b12 so a lot of the times I'll tell the women to take a, a multivitamin or a, a b12 supplement and I do monitor their b12 levels I do want to note that I do use spironolactone a lot for women who are complaining about hirsutism which is the excess hair growth but remember spironolactone under no condition can be used for women who is trying to conceive because we know that it does have uh, detrimental effects to the fetus even as you know even if you are two weeks pregnant we know that there can be a lot of side effects and can cause birth effects so my patients normally who I put on spironolactone are women who are on birth control and they are not trying to get pregnant they just want to control the symptoms of PCOS such as excess hair growth and they're just tired of having 
having to shave regularly or wax and this really helps them um, you know slow down some of the hair growth it doesn't help eliminate it but a lot of women will say oh my goodness you know instead of having to shave every other day I'm having to wax or shave maybe every five days so it does help with that and normally I'll start the patients on a lower dose normally about 50 and then I'll max it out to 100 if needed so again guys uh, remembering that you know weight loss is crucial if you are able to lose weight with PCOS that's going to help with the insulin resistance you can try some of the medications and talk to your doctor about trying some of the medications that I mentioned if you feel that you have PCOS um, please make sure you talk to your doctor so that you can be diagnosed correctly and therefore you can get the treatment that you need to live a better quality life and not struggle with all of the symptoms that I've mentioned. So again guys I really hope you guys are enjoying my channel and I hope you learned from this video. Consider giving this video a thumbs up. Share this video with others that you think might benefit. Share your own stories down below so comment and I will see you guys all next time. Thank you.